Hey everyone, this is Blackhawk SC, and welcome back to my channel. Today is the highly anticipated Civil War patch, which brings several new technologies and several new chassis to the game, including the Mad Cat MK2, which we will talk about in this video. Here we're seeing the Death Strike, which is the hero variant of the MK2. The Mad Cat MK2 is one of the more highly anticipated chassis because I think a lot of people remember it from MechWarrior 4. I remember that this chassis carried so many weapons and I took it well into the last several missions in the game, so I'm pretty nostalgic about this mech, this mech as well. By the way, this video was made possible by one of my longtime viewers, so a big thanks to him and to all of my viewers out there. In this video, we're going to talk about the Mad Cat MK2 and some of its loadouts um, that feature new weapons that were introduced in the patch today. You can definitely run some older meta builds on the MK2 since it's a pretty versatile chassis as we'll go into later on. For example, you can run the old Space Whale build on this Death Strike, which is essentially the ear medium LPL Gauss combo, which any veteran player should be familiar with. But for the purposes of the video, we're going to showcase a couple of builds using new tech instead. A little bit more about the chassis overall. The MK2 is a 90 ton clan battle mech, which means you can adjust the engine, structure, and armor type as you need. We've seen from examples like the Kodiak that the versatility of clan battle mechs often makes them better than clan omni mechs in this game. For example, we can increase the engine size and decrease weapon tonnage for brawler builds, or leave more tonnage for range builds. The second advantage of the chassis is that you can notice the weapon mounts are relatively high up, so you don't have to deal with hitting rocks as much as with a mech like the Executioner. A couple of disadvantages I think is that the arms take up a lot of surface area, and since many builds will use an arm mounted weapon, it'll, it's easy to lose a good amount of firepower quickly. It also means that torso twisting isn't as effective as it is on some other mechs. Another con isn't really from the chassis itself, but more from the fact that the PGI nerfed the ERPPC Gauss combo. So now we have fewer playstyles to choose from since most of the MK2 variants feature some combination of ballistic and energy hardpoints. In other words, it'll be more difficult to come up with viable build options if you own multiple chassis and you want, want to run multiple builds on each, or run different builds on each. Overall though, the chassis is really solid and I can see it being placed among the best mechs in this game. Before we get into the builds though, I wanted to mention that these aren't necessarily going to be the best options for the MK2. And we're just going to play around with what I say are viable options if you want to run Civil War era weapons on the chassis. The first one we're going to look at is the 1. And instead of the LPLs that we traditionally see on Clan Laser Goss builds, I'm replacing it with two heavy large lasers instead. Similar to LPLs and ER larges, the heavy lasers don't the heavy larges don't go seat with mediums. And furthermore, the ER med and heavy large lasers sync up uh, the ranges sync up pretty well. I'm going into the skills. Uh, here are the skills. Uh, we're focusing mostly on range and heat gen on the firepower tree. And then on the survival tree, we're going to focus on armor and structure. We're going to do half of the speed tweak that we have available. And then the rest we're going to put on heat gen or heat containment and cool run. So I'll talk about more. I'll talk more about the chassis during gameplay. So let's get into a match. In this match, we're on Canyon Network, which is a long to mid range map, which is pretty good for our build. Uh, early on, we're just taking some uh, long range gauss shots. We have some ammo to spare, so we'll just take uh, we'll just um, you know take some of these shots in the beginning. So one thing that you'll notice uh, immediately, I think, if you take ear medium and large combo, large laser or ear, heavy large combo, is that the heavy large duration is much higher than that of the ER ER mediums. Uh, that can be kind of annoying, but uh, I think it'll be I think it's okay because um, for the increased duration, uh, you're getting much higher uh, damage output. Uh, much higher than even the large pulse lasers. So, uh, suppose that you're running large pulses on this build, your alpha is going to be a much weaker because you only have, if you want to try to avoid ghost heat, you're going to do like two large pulse, two ear meads, or something like that, and your alpha is going to be much weaker. And you're not really gaining any range because uh, your ear meads has to be there, right? So, 
your mid-range alpha is much better with uh, large, large, uh, heavy large and your meats. So we just lost uh, our left arm. This is kind of the mm, the hitbox problems I was talking about earlier, where the arm takes up a lot of surface area, so it's easily it can easily be uh, can be easily destroyed, uh, especially if you're torso twisting and trying to protect your trying to protect your side. But you know, I think you would still rather uh, torso twist than not. Um, it's just that you know you're gonna lose you're gonna lose stuff. <laughs> Uh, if you torso twist uh, in the Medica MK2. So, I think if you're running Gauss, uh, your mead, large, large, heavy large, um, probably the more annoying thing other than the duration of the heavy larges is the, the desync, the cooldown desync between like all of these weapons. Um, I think the EMEs cool the fastest, Gauss rifle cool like push, slower, and the ER, the heavies cool the cool the slowest, which is kind of weird because most of the time it's the Gauss rifle that cools the slowest. But yeah, the Alpha is pretty amazing on this. Uh, pretty, well, I wouldn't say amazing, but pretty good on this um, on this chassis. And it's not that hot either. Um, if you're comparing it with something like the Space Whale uh, build from, you know, on the Dire Whale, on the Dire Wolf, uh, this thing runs a lot cooler. And you just have to kind of deal with the maybe a little bit lower range, I guess, and um, the longer duration of the heavy larges. And I want to get some damage in, but like my teammates are just stepping in front of me. It's okay because we're winning, so uh, an aggressive team is a good team. But yeah, I was I was like raking, especially with the long duration lasers, I'm raking damage all over my teammates. So. I like the sound that they that PGI did for the heavy largest too because. I get some glitched, uh, gl um, some lag actually. Um, I like the sound. I, I just keep thinking that PJ keeps having to make new laser sounds, and they do a pretty good job of it. I think so. Um, congrats, PGI. I guess. And that guy dies before we can get a shot in. And we we're winning by a pretty big margin here. I'm trying to get some damage in because everybody's... Our team is like super aggressive. Uh, which is really good, but you know, my shots are just getting blocked all over. Well, hopefully, yeah, hopefully you can see the combo is decent. Uh, I'm not sure if it's the best right now, but it's. I think I will play this some more. Um, and by the results, it's not too bad. The second variant I'm going to look at today is the 4 variant, which is the only variant that does not have ballistics. With 4 missile hardpoints, this is a good variant to try out the new ATM weapon system, which is the only new clam missile weapon in this patch. The ATM is kind of a weird weapon though, so let's actually take a look at this. It has 3 effective ranges, plus a minimum range. At long ranges, each missile does just 1 damage, which is the same as an LRM missile. At mid range, each missile does 2 damage, and short range, which is 120 to 270 meters, each missile does 3 damage. I personally don't think it's worth taking a shot at long range. You know, you only get half as much ammo per tons as half as much ammo per ton as with LRMs. So if you fire at long ranges, you're essentially wasting ammo compared with LRMs. Second, the missile velocity is slow, so you're at most likely to you're most likely to miss anyways. At mid range, LRMs and ATMs start to balance out. And at short range is where the ATM truly shines. 
With this loadout that we have, we're doing a maximum of 126 damage per alpha with the missiles, with just with the missiles alone. This may sound nice, but the ATMs have a lot of the same problems that all locked on weapons have, which is higher face time, slow projectile speed, the inability to target specific components, and having to deal with ECM. Overall, I think I like the ATMs better than the LRMs because of that 3 damage at, mid, at low ranges, but I feel like they're, they'll be pretty niche due to the limitations that I just mentioned. But you know, we'll, we'll see. Going into this build specifically, I would like to take 4 ATM-12s, but with the XL engine there, I don't have the slots to do so. I do need a big XL because the ATM is in reality a short to short mid-range weapon, so I need speed to get into brawl range and to get out of bad situations. Because I need to counter ECM to speed up locks, I have the active probe and the tag. I also don't believe Artemis applies to ATMs, so there's no need to upgrade to Artemis here. Also because of the min range, I have 3 heavy medium lasers for backup. Hopefully that's something I don't need, but they're there just in case. For skills, I have maxed out speed and survivability, and left the remaining nodes for heat gen, cooldown, and a cool run here, and heat containment. I'll talk more about the mech and the build itself during the match, so let's go and check it out. So for the majority of the beginning of the match, we're just trying to be patient and uh, not engage in bad situations. Um, but we do see, because we're kind of short range and uh, kind of a long range map, but we do see in this situation that um, we do have this a bunch of targets out there, especially like that Atlas um, kind of approaching us, so we're getting a little bit closer. We're taking a little bit of risk uh, getting <laughs> kind of stuck here. Um, taking a little bit of risk going down here and exposing ourselves for a little while. Um, and so here we see that Atlas uh, is carrying L MRMs there. See, we're at that range now where we're doing that 3 damage uh, per missile. Uh, even though some of our missiles are hitting ground here, we're still able to do plenty of damage to that Atlas. I think you'll see a lot of damage being done to that done to the Atlas. See, I don't want to shoot at those ranges here. Uh, one thing that you'll notice about... I don't want to shoot that urban mech. So one thing that you'll notice about um, ATMs is that the, the flight path of the missiles... Um, they're, they, they're, they go directly forward, pretty much. And, you know... It's very much, it's much like, it's a lot like, you know, direct fire weapons, actually. Um, even clan LRMs, I think, have a bigger arc than ATMs do. So yeah, they just basically, like, shoot forward, like, uh, like SRMs almost. So you gotta, you kinda have to be careful um, when you're playing ATMs not to play them like LRMs and try to like get them to arc over some obstacle. You have to um, pretty much um, fire them fate while you have like kind of visual uh, on, on the target. You can see like, you can see kind of like where the phase time comes in, like um, my CT is getting opened up already and just because I'm all the staring that I have to do. You know, 300, like at the at that mid range, remember, we were doing like 2 damage per missile, so that's okay. That's like LRMs. You also be, have to be mindful of the spread as well. Um, the spread is kind of big on the ATMs. So even though you're doing a lot of damage, like the damage is, is sort of spread, so I'd be careful about that. So essentially the ATMs 
can kill slower than you expect. Out of missiles now. So one of the reasons why I put an extra half ton of ammo like later on, this this build has one half ton less ammo than I showed in a, in a earlier. Okay guys, I know there's a lot of material to cover when it comes to the Civil War patch and I'll try to cover these topics in small chunks at a time. But I hope that this video helped break down some details about the Madcap MK2 chassis and how new clan weapons and some of the details about the new clan weapons that came with this patch. If you have questions, make sure to leave a comment below and as always, be sure to subscribe and thanks for watching. Bye for now.